Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. I'm fishing at Barston Lakes today with my good friend Colin Harvey. We've got some matches coming up at this venue and we wanted to come down and have a bit of a practice, try a few different things out. It's been really cold and even though it's spring you wouldn't feel it at the moment. But that's the best fish I've had so far. It's a bream, it's got to be over two pound. We've been fishing for about two hours and my original plan was to just try and catch anything to start with because it's been so cold. I mean, yesterday this lake was actually frozen in the morning and it thawed out yesterday, so certainly challenging conditions. My initial thinking was to approach the feeder very, very carefully in terms of what I was feeding. I just fished a small feeder with neat ground bait and just cast it out. I didn't go in, you know, and put a good amount of feed in to start with. I was very, very cautious. And it took about half an hour and I started to get the odd fish. I've been catching some small skimmers. I think I've had four or five small skimmers and a couple of small roach. So when we were setting up, I discussed it with Colin and Colin decided he was gonna fish in a more positive way. So I know Colin's had some better bream. It might be interesting to just go and see how he's catching and uh, what his thoughts are on the day so far. As James mentioned, I'm fishing slightly different to himself. Um, he's taken a very frugal approach, you know, feeding hardly any bait through the feeder, small maggots, 20 hook, um, probably knowing James, 0 0.10 bottom on it. Um, I've gone totally the opposite. Um, I've tried to feed quite a bit of bait. I fished a 16 hook, I put four maggots on. It started off pretty slow and all of a sudden two decent sized bream, two and a half, three pound a piece, and then a skimmer, and then it's gone really quiet since. So whether it's been the right option today, I'm not sure. We're two hours in so far. Um, I must admit, I did do a bit of cheating to start with. While James has got his back turned, I give it four or five casts without him looking to put some bait in before I tied a hook on. Um, sadly, it didn't work, but it was worth a try at the end. Um, I think we'll catch a few more fish yet. It's very cold, the, the water's almost freezing. Yesterday, the lake was froze over, and as you know, when the ice melts, all that cold water falls to the bottom of the lake, puts the fish off the feed, but we've got to encourage them and keep going at it. I think we catch a few more fish. The last two hours will be the test for it all. I had a little bit of success in the last match here, only a week and a half ago, fish feeding this positive approach, putting four maggots, dead maggots on an hook, sitting back and waiting for some big bream. 
six bream turned up, sort of two and a half, three pound a piece. So that's the reason I've tried it today. Um, so far, as I said, only two bream, but there's still time to catch plenty more. But that positive approach, even in the winter months sometimes, with a big bait on a lake with fairly coloured water like it is today, cold water will produce the odd big bream. For me, it's something I'm prepared to take a gamble with. It's paid off in the past and it'll be interesting to see the comparisons at the end of the day between my catch and James's catch. The tackle that I'm using today, Cadence 11 foot number two feeder rod. It's a classic rod for, for fishing short range on commercial fisheries. Um, I'm using a CS10 400 size reel kitted out on it and they it's well matched set of kit. This is a short line, I've fished 20 turns of the reel. I fished one of these new Guru feeders that's sliding up and down the line, the smaller size with the three holes. And as I said, I fished a slightly bigger hook, size 16 hook. And the hooks that I've been using, I'm going to dig them out. It's a very popular hook that I love on these sort of venues. It's a Guru light wire gauge, size 16. It's an hook that's capable of landing carp, bream, and it, it's got that slightly turned in bend, so the fish don't tend to come off and the bait doesn't come off. When you're fishing a true barbless hook, like you have to do on commercial fisheries, that is a fantastic hook for landing bream on. That's the short range gear. The long range gear is slightly different. That's got nylon on. This has got braid on but I've got a slightly longer than normal shock leader on it. Um, same approach, this is a, a Nissa feeder with a bullet in the bottom that slides lovely up and down the line again. Same hook and this time I'm using the Cadence CR10 12 foot again with the 400 reel and I'm using 08 braid on it and I've extended the shock leader on this one. Instead of having normally I would have sort of one and a half lengths of the rod, I've got two and a half lengths of the rod just to give it a bit more give for the distance should I hook a, an F1 or a carp or something like that? It's just got that little bit extra give when, it, when, when I'm playing the fish. Um, at the moment, that's been the successful outfit. That's the outfit I've had the two bream on, a skimmer and a couple of roach as well. Um, the short line hasn't worked, but I'm hoping towards the end of this session, the short line will come into its own. Right, the way I've been feeding the feeder today is I've been putting a few maggots, odd pellets and things like that in the centre of the feeder. Right, and then I just key all that into the feeder, slape it all up so I've got it all. You don't need to press it too firm here because it, the lake is only around about two or three foot deep. And what I've been doing with dead red maggots today, quite a simple approach, I'm actually hooking them in the, the pointed end. I'm putting four dead red maggots on. The reason that I hook it in the point, them in the point, it's purely because when you're putting four on, it doesn't mask the point of the hook. So that's been the setup today. And I'm going 40 turns of the CS10 reel. I picked a marker on the far bank, it's actually the back of a car. And it's a smooth cast right to the clip. Right, and because it's shallow, I don't wrench the rod back. I put the rod instantly under the water one turn of the reel and there you go and if you notice tip of the rod is there has got that nice slight curve into the lake so and the braid sunk straight away it's quite a strong wind in our face today putting a chop on so you haven't got to worry about sinking the braid the actual ripple on the lake is simp is sinking the braid and that's the way that I've approached it Well, about 20 minutes ago, I had a, my best bream, which was about two pounds. And I'm just paying a, what feels like another good bream now. It really is a, a cold day with this wind blowing hard into our face. And um, I'm not actually feeding anything at the moment, just neat, fine ground bait. And it seems to be doing the trick. I think sometimes on really hard days like this, you, you hardly want to feed anything. You just want to attract the fish and then hopefully get them to take your hook bait. 
Uh, that's another nice bream. The hook bait I've been using, I've been alternating between single or double red maggot and red maggot and a fluoro pinky, but that was on two red maggots. <laughs> Perhaps interestingly, it was on two live maggots. I've been using dead maggots, but the better bream I've had and skimmers have actually been on live maggots today. Well, the sun's just come out after netting that bream and it feels so nice and warm. I can't imagine how cold it must be, the, the water temperature. But um, anyway, we'll keep plugging away and uh, I'll keep trying with this frugal approach. And I think it's, uh, it's providing a great contrast for our match. When you know the going's going to be tough and... Uh, through experience of bream fishing in matches on days like this, I really think it does pay to be very careful with your feed. And obviously you can always, if you start to catch well or the people around you are catching, you can always go onto a bigger feeder and put more feed in and respond to that. But I honestly think a lot of the time it's, it's very easy to to overfeed the peg. Maybe you're trying to force the peg and produce something that it's just simply not going to. So the mentality of just catching what you can to start with, I think is really important when you feed a fish in, in the winter. I do a lot of team fishing and one great advantage of that is when you're practicing like this and you're fishing with your teammates you can learn off each other but also try out different methods, different baits and just try and learn some what can be really critical information about the venue that you're fishing and certainly in the conditions that you're likely to be fishing. So today um, it's, it's great having Colin here and we can both try different feeding patterns and try maybe different distances and different rigs and really try and work out what's going to be best on the day. So I'm actually fishing quite a bit finer than Colin. Um, I'm fishing with a 010mm hook length and a size 20 or 18 hook and um, I'm fishing with braid. It's not always allowed to fish braid here at Barston, but in the winter we're allowed to. So that's something definitely if you're coming down you want to check with um, the fishery to just to check that you can use it. But for me, on a hard day like this when I'm fishing at sort of medium range, medium to long range, I simply would, I would seriously struggle to fish without a braid basically because it just keeps everything so tight and accurate and obviously makes casting so much easier as well. It must be spring even though it doesn't feel like it. Those geese are really making a, a lot of squawking and look like they're pairing up so they're definitely getting some action. Hopefully we're going to catch a few more bream as well. Well this is another bream and it does look like my negative tactics are, are working better today. I don't think Colin's caught any more fish since that initial couple of bream that he had. Another trick that I just employed then, I'd, I'd gone another perhaps 20 minutes without a bite and I just unclipped and fished perhaps about three or four metres past where I've been fishing all day and I've just managed to sneak another fish. So. On a hard day, just a decision like that can make the difference. It's not as big that one, but we'll take anything on a hard day like this. Skimmer about a pound, I guess. 
Well, we're starting to build a nice weight now. Well, that feels like another skimmer. Perhaps it's a little bit bigger than the last one. The rod I'm using today is the 12 foot CR10 number two. And it's a wonderful rod when you cast in short to medium range. I'm fishing at around about 35 meters today. And it's punching this rocket feeder into the wind, no problem at all. But I absolutely love it when I'm playing smaller skimmers and bream like that, when I'm fishing fine. It just cushions all the lunges of the fish and it's just a joy to use. Although I'm using braid on the reel, I've got a shock leader of 019 Pro Gold, which is around about four pound breaking strain. And I like to have my shot leader so that I've got two or three turns on the reel when I'm holding the feeder. And the idea of the shot leader isn't really to protect me from cracking off the line when I'm casting in this situation because I'm not using heavy feeders. It's more to do with giving me some extra cushion and give when I'm playing the fish on the hard and harsh braid. So it's a bit of a compromise really than fishing braid straight through because certainly when you're fishing fine like this you do need a little bit of a cushion and a little bit of stretch. So that's definitely what this is doing today. I'm going to try double pinky just to see. I have had a few small roach on the pinky which obviously I don't really want because I want to try and leave my bait out for the skimmers and bream but it's always worth a try as well because in my experience, Breen really love two or three fluoro pinkies like that. The tip I'm using in the rod today is the, the stiffest tip that's supplied with the rod and that's a two ounce carbon tip. And I don't know, maybe people might be surprised about that because you might think that you want to fish a, a softer tip when the going's tough like this. But actually I think uh, any softer tip than this would be prove pretty much useless because there's a, obviously a strong, Brit, strong wind today and we've got an undertow and the tip's working absolutely perfectly. It's just bending slightly and it's enabling me to register any line bites and any bites of smaller fish and also obviously when I'm catching the skimmers and bream I'm getting a really nice positive bite as well so it's worth bearing in mind you perhaps don't always want to fish as soft a tip as you think you need to. Another thing that we wanted to experiment with today was try and work out what the best length of hook length was and I've been doing quite well with a hook, quite a short hook length today, around about two foot, and I just thought, just out of interest, I'll just try one that's a fraction longer and just see if that makes any difference. I'm not a real fan of uh, tying hook lengths when I'm feeder fishing. I like to tie them on the bank, and um, what I will do is I'll have various hook tires with different hooks loaded. So say I want to shorten the hook length, I can just reel in, bite the old hook off, and then very quickly tie the hook on. I also think it's really important to keep changing your hook when you're feeder fishing. Well, any fishing obviously, but certainly feeder fishing, because I think most of the time you're relying on the fish to hook themselves. So you want to make sure that the hook that you're using is as sharp as possible. On days like this when you are having to wait for a bite, um, I'm leaving the feeder out today for quite long periods, perhaps up to about 15 minutes. and. Um, I don't like to hold the rod in that situation. Obviously when the, when the fish are feeding well and perhaps when you're catching more silverfish like 
roach, hybrids. It's important to hold the rod so you can respond to a bite. You know, sometimes the bites come really quickly. But when I'm fishing like this, I like to fish with a, a butt rest like this on my box so that I can just put the, put the rod down. I know everything's correct. The feeder's in the right spot and I can just basically sit and wait and not knock the rod or have any issues like that or perhaps when I'm shaking and dithering a bit like today in this cold. Well this is a small fish. I've had a few roach and small skimmers and that doesn't bother me on a day like this because I think probably smaller fish feeding will obviously attract some of the bigger fish as well. And I have been feeding a few bits of loose feed in with the feeder as well. Been putting a few fluoro pinkies and a few casters. Well, it is a roach, about five or six ounces. And on a tough light, day like this, it's all weight. Best hook bait today has been double red maggot and as you can see there I've hooked them through the tail on this 18 hook and I think that's really important because if I'd hook them through the, the blunt end there'd be a lot of maggot and meat around the point and you run the risk of the maggot doubling over and pulling out a fish. I find that by hooking them through the tail gently like that it doesn't matter the, the maggots stay live and they keep wriggling. And it is interesting that the live maggots seem to have outfished dead maggots today. I have no idea why that might be, but perhaps just the movements attracting the fish. So the ground bait I'm using is a, a very fine mix. And I do think that's a critical thing to mention as well when you're fishing in the winter in hard conditions. I want to attract the fish, but I really don't want to feed them. I can then, if the fishing improves, I can add more particles like pellets or casters and increase the food content. But that's my base mix there that's very fine. And I achieve that by grinding it at home and then running it through a flour sieve so that I can get it as fine as possible. The actual mix is, it's a new mix that I've been experimenting with. I've got two parts of Maruku ground bait. One is the Maruku Lake. The other one is the Maruku fish meal bream. And then I've got another part, another third of Ringer's Dart, which is one of my favorite mixes when, whenever I'm skimmer fishing. It's actually proved to be a, a really nice mix. It's, you can see I've mixed that quite dry, but it's quite a sticky mix, it's certainly sticky enough to hold in the feeder when I'm fishing in this shallow water here at Barston. Um, but it does break down nicely. So I'm, I'm really quite impressed with this mix. I tend to mix my ground bait for feeder fishing either the night before or in the morning of the session. And uh, I'll slightly over wet it, uh, leave it to stand uh, riddle it and then maybe need to add a bit more water if it's dried out a bit but when I'm fishing in hard conditions like this I like to run it through a, a maggot riddle and the final thing I'll do is once I've mixed it I'll run it through a maggot riddle and I'll actually throw away any of the bigger lumps that may have been formed during the mixing process so it just emphasizes the fact that I'm fishing with a very very fine uh, quite inert ground bait um, but one that's not certainly going to overfeed the fish. One thing I haven't mentioned was the distance that I'm fishing and why I'm fishing at that distance. I've fished Boston quite a lot over the years and um, it's amazing that there's 
different areas there's there's definite gravel bars and there's definite areas of silt and one thing I always do is I'll chuck a bomb out at the start and just have a feel around and round about 35 meters out on this peg there's a definite gravel bar and I decided to, to fish on that gravel bar and uh, it's actually proved by the fact that my rocket feeder is even though it's a light rocket feeder it's quite small every so often when I'm moving the feeder I can feel it going through the gravel and it, it's actually bringing back some gravel so it shows that I'm fishing on one of those gravel bars I did set up another rod which is um, the 11 foot CR10 feeder and my intention was to try that at around about 16 meters um, I've given it two or three chucks and uh, I've not had a bite on it and I know that Colin spent quite a bit of time just seeing if he could get the fish feeding on that line today but I think he's failed as well but it's worth bearing in mind that on a hard day it can be a good idea to to try another line and a good tip about that is don't fish both lines straight out what I like to do is I'll have my long line and I'll put it at a an angle away and then I'll put my short line in an angle the other way so if I am catching on the long line I'm not bringing fish back through the short line and perhaps disturbing them obviously it's not worked today but on another day we might have had a good run of fish on that closer line and I know since the advent of the feeder competitions a lot of fish have been caught in on what is essentially the pole line so it's just something to bear in mind rather than just sticking to one line all day. That's the rocket feeder I'm using today. Um, as you can see it's not a big feeder and um, these kind of feeders are just so great when you punch in into a strong wind like this because they fly so direct, they're so aerodynamic. And I've gone for just an open cage today because this area at Barston is not very deep at all. I think it's probably only about four or five foot deep right out where we're fishing. I like to carry some of these rocket feeders that are taped up like this. So if I'm fishing in deeper water or if I really want to concentrate the feed on the bottom, that's the kind of feeder that I'll go for. But today, definitely this has been the best to fish with and it's, it's really helped maintain some good accuracy. I'm fishing it on a, a fixed pattern oster with around about a, a, four hour, a four inch loop of line onto a snap swivel and I'm just simply attaching that to the, the mono that's on this rocket feeder. Well that was a good bite and uh, there's definitely another skimmer. I went back onto the trusty double red maggot and that had been out for about 10 minutes before I had a bite. And I think it's probably time to call it a day. I know we're all quite cold and um, I think we'll make this the last fish and we'll get back into that lovely comfortable clubhouse. Not a bad way to finish the day.
Roll call, as expected, it was a tough day given the conditions. Just give us a summary of how you've caught today. Yes, James. Um, I split my day into two parts, really. I tried the short line and the long line, and roughly 50% of the time on both lines. The short line was um, poor, to say the least. So I had two roach on it, um, and that's in two and a half hours fishing. And the two and a half hours on the long line, I managed to get three big bream, three pound each, three skimmers and another two or three roach. So the long line was okay. Yeah. You know, and that's a line that I should have stuck more time on today. Yeah, no. And then, I mean, I, to contrast that, I sort of fished in a more negative way. Uh, just tried to catch what I could um, and fished finer. Finer hook lengths, hooks, smaller baits. And um, it's been interesting and we've learned a lot, haven't we? And that is the benefit of practicing. That's what we're here to do, practice and get it right. Yes. Absolutely, Carl. I tell you what, I think it's time we should uh, retire to the lovely clubhouse and warm up. And have a point. Let's go and enjoy a point. Cheers.